Well, Stuart, start walking this way. Come up and out of the street, if not up and out of the wind. Can you tell from that vantage point all of the lavender and the purple hues that are starting to come out in the pansies and the creeping phlox? And you can probably also see some up in the window box. Now, today's walkabout, I want to talk about what things are coming up specifically, because that's what our Wednesday walkabouts are about, after all, but also what is really slow this year and what is, well, the timing just seems to be off. And that is my question of the day. And somebody had a great idea if it was you, please let me know. When you respond to these, if you would put your zone first, that way as others read your comments, they will know immediately if your comment is relative to them and their zone. So if you would answer this question, put your zone first. And then I want to know in terms of what is typically in flower, in bloom and starting to emerge in your spring gardens, no matter what your zone is, tell me how those things are doing. So if, for example, my creeping phlox is starting to come out, it's pretty much on schedule. What kinds of spring blooming perennials, bulbs, shrubs, whether or not they are early, on track, or late, as is typical for this time of year? Because I have gotten, I think today, Stuart, let's walk up this way, I think just this morning I read four comments from people who live in my area wanting to know if my tulips were late and they were kind of concerned about them. And I was kind of, I am kind of concerned about them too, which is one of the arguments and one of the main reasons to do two things. First of all, inquire of other gardeners in your area what's going on, but also to keep a garden journal. And the motivation for my garden journaling recently I've noticed is not so much to to really chronicle or record what I planted when though that's very helpful and what things performed really well so that obviously that's very helpful but also I can record what is blooming when when it began to bloom and when it went out of bloom and also weather conditions because that has helped me immensely in comparing one year to the next, which is why I like garden journals that are more than just one year. And it keeps me from either worrying unnecessarily or thinking I might need to do something to perhaps speed something along or to slow it down. So for example, right now I've got a couple, a few of tulips that are coming into bloom. Now I always have maybe just a few that kind of spit out this early. These may be ones that have come back from a previous year. They tend to bloom a little bit earlier. But one thing I'm looking at, and I think you should look at too, is how are those bulbs coming up? So I have noticed, let me backtrack a little bit. I plant a wide spectrum of bulbs. In other words, lots of tulips that bloom early, mid, and late. And by doing that, they come up and they bloom at different times. So what I have found out this year, discovered this year, is that those that are going to bloom later and come up later are really late this year. Some of them are just now breaking the surface, which for me is highly unusual. Another thing that I've noticed, and every year this kind of freaks me out. So it's, it's important to point out that I have, I have noted this same thing and observed it in the past, so I'm trying not to get too concerned, but that a lot of them that are coming into bud, the buds seem smaller, shorter, and some of them seemed a little, seem a little deformed. Now, could that be because of our very, very dry fall and winter? Yes. Could it be because of our extreme temperatures? Right now, it's I don't know, what is it today, Stuart? It's cold, cold and breezy, yeah. <laughs> not freezing, cold and breezy. So it's probably in the 50s. But this coming week, it's supposed to get down to about 34, not down to freezing, but then all the way up to one day I saw 89. So that could be another reason that the bulbs are starting to perform in a funky way. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. I'm not gonna freak out too much yet, 
but nevertheless, it's important to record in your journal what's happening when. And also, like I say, read other people's zones to see if the same things are happening in their gardens. That way it makes you feel like, oh, maybe it's not just me. Maybe that's just what the weather is doing this year and it can maybe comfort you a little bit, make you feel a little bit more secure about your gardening. Okay, something else I want to point out to you that you may have noticed when Stuart was in the street. I've been really moving a lot of boxwood balls out of the front. Now, I told you I was going to do that. It needed to be done last year, but actually last year I was so shell-shocked from all of the damage that I really didn't want to do it then. But I have moved, let's see, I moved one here. Uh, and I'll show you where I put it, but I had one here that was blocking a sprinkler head. So when I did my sprinkler inventory and sprinkler in-ground sprinkler assessment, I noticed that it was blocking a sprinkler head. So that's a tip, you guys. Right now is a good time to transplant anything, move it to another location. If it is, you're either going to have to move the sprinkler head or you're going to have to move the plant. And for me, it's usually easier to move the plant. So that's one thing that I did. I also had two in here, and I've moved both of those. One of them was very large. It's waiting in, to the, in the back to find a new home, and I replaced it with foxglove. As I did the one that I removed here, and you guys gave me input on that, I asked you if I should remove the one next to this lantern. And I did, and I planted some foxglove in there, though I think I'm going to plant a few more. So here is, here is another kind of motivating thing as, I, as I'm moving things around. I, I, I give tons of attention and resources and labor and uh, worry to my spring show that consists of, you know, the tulip bulbs, the phlox, the pansies, that kind of thing. Now I want to give equally as much attention, deserved attention, to that which comes after the tulips are done. And that would be things like all of the columbine, the foxglove, sadly, usually the feverfew, but because it was so dry, I have very few feverfew ceilings this year, um, and some, some other things that will come up. And so because of that, I am relocating a lot of the foxglove that have gone to seed and are hiding in all sorts of weird places um, throughout the front beds into one kind of aggregated area so then they will make a little bit more of an impact. Also because as I think I've told you later, I, and forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but we may have, we have a lot of new followers and a lot of new subscribers. And by the way, this is where I'll do my pitch. If you like this channel, please do subscribe. Um, but I, I really wanted this area to feel a little bit less congested and open and maybe a little bit more receptive to seasonal color. So I think I have I, I think I have accomplished that, and I'm quite pleased with the way it looks. I often look for my bedroom window on the second story, and I can look down, and that helps me assess which boxwoods might need to be removed and relocated. The next one I'm gonna remove and relocate is this one right here. This is, uh, I believe it's a green mountain, and by the way, it is not sick. It is, it is not disabled in any way. It's just done that bronzing thing that sometimes box would do. It doesn't, it, some people don't like it. It really doesn't bother me too much, and it will definitely be remedied when I give it a trim and I move it to another location. So that is one that I'm going to remove. And then over here, there are, I kind of want to point this out to you guys. I don't know if you can see back in there, but I've got all sorts of foxglove that are hiding in places where they really won't be too visible. For example, Stuart, can you see underneath that U right there? There's one over there. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I am pointing right there. And you can, you can see it. And then there's columbine coming up everywhere. Now, finally, 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 we got rain. We got a really good rain day before yesterday. The best rain we've had in, what, eight months, Stuart? Probably eight months. And because of that, I am starting to see lots of seedlings germinate. And let me come over here because I want to point out something. 
this is a wonderful time to start honing and improving your seedling recognition skills, which is, I think I've talked about it in the past, as a superpower of gardeners. Because look at all of a sudden, look here, I have all sorts of seedlings that are both probably columbine and some pansy seedlings because these have been in the ground since last fall. And those are starting to come up just about everywhere. Now what I can do when they get a little bit larger is I can divide them, I can thin them, and I can separate them and again put them in areas that where they will be a little bit more impactful and contribute more greatly to the landscape. Stuart over here can maybe can you see in my shadow yeah. over here? And look you guys, here is a snail. Um, this is a seedling of or it's actually grown out of its seedling stage but it's a tiny little start of Minoan lace and I have seen that coming up. Then over there Stuart in the sun, that frilly one right there, that is larkspur. Now interestingly this year I haven't seen as much larkspur as I normally do but knowing how to identify seedlings and what they look like is a very valuable skill and if you're not sure but if you suspect for example that something might be a columbine or whatever you can just google just tell Siri, hey Siri google images of columbine seedlings and you will get some some reference points so that you can compare one to another so that's kind of what's going on in the front you can see that some of the hellebores that I have moved to other locations where I, I have so many seedlings of those. And those are starting to bloom in other areas where either they planted themselves or I planted them. And I have moved those clumps around to different locations. So and I'm probably also, remind me, Stuart, I need to dig some up and give some to your mom. Um, but I have those coming up in lots of different places. And they are, I've had to cut back the foliage several times because it, it erupts. And then we'll have another cold blast after it comes out. Then I'll kind of clip off that foliage and let it start again. But the front is, it's late. The front is late, but I'm still pleased with how it's coming along. And it's okay if it's late as long as it performs. So that doesn't bother me too much. And I don't want it too early because then we might get premature heat and the show won't last as long. So it's always a tension between that and weather events and things blooming. So let's come this way a little bit, Stuart. And, and I hope, I don't know how the light is today, Stuart, it's so bright and so breezy. I'm not buying a whole lot of annuals this year. Um, you can see my window box is kind of coming along. And typically on these walkabouts, I always have a pair of scissors with me so that I can clip off things. Oh, like these past their prime little buds on these Carnegie hyacinths and some of the violas, but it's actually pretty cold out and I wanted my gloves today. So I will do that on, on my next walkabout in the morning when it's a little bit warmer. So this year I planted these hyacinths and I planted these little, I believe these were sailboat daffodils. And I have to say they're sweet but I probably wouldn't do that again in here. Uh, they just don't make as much of a contrast and as much of a color punch. They're very delicate, delicate in tone to the point where they almost look a little washed out to me. But in here, I planted, Stuart, can you see, show that? Those are some tiny little parsley seedlings I started and I, I transplanted those and they had been growing outside, so they're hardened off and I transplanted those and I transplanted lots of little parsley seedlings through here. Normally, or a lot of times, I will start with something that's a little bit bigger, 
but this year at the nurseries, again, maybe it's because things are late, stuff just doesn't look very good, and I haven't had time to really go out and do a lot of shopping. But I've got some sweet alyssum. I typically always put sweet alyssum in this window box, and I will still do that. And then I found some bacopa on sale and some white geraniums on sale, so I couldn't resist those. But I'm not again if we get another freeze which is questionable i don't know that we will um, then I'll, I'll put those out the muscari is doing really really nicely and is just i think looks so pretty with the color of pansy but the pansies and and the violas this year they also are they're not recovering as quickly. I think it's just been, we just, it's been too cold and we had some snow and ice. So they will recover, they will live, but it's gonna take them some time. Now here are a couple of boxwoods that I transplanted. I transplanted this one from the back. I transplanted this one from another area in the front. I had a, I can't, oh, I had an arborvita in here that I transplanted to the back. And then this is a boxwood ball that's pretty much lost its form. This is the one that was blocking the sprinkler head. And I transplanted it into this pot and I'm gonna give it a haircut. And it is time to give your boxwood a haircut now because you can see that it's starting to put out, like look at this one, Stuart. And by the way, these are, I think all three of these are winter green, or two of them are, maybe one of them is a winter gem, but see how it's starting to put on new foliage, new growth right there. So this is the time you want to prune them. So I'm gonna do that. On a not very windy day, I will spray again with some dormant oil spray to prevent any kind of spider mite or white fly or scale, those kind of pest problems down the line. Uh, but it's way too windy today. But I still, you can only spray dormant oil spray in a window of time when the temperatures are just so, and you can't do it when it gets too hot. So you wanna be mindful of that, but today it's too, it's too windy. Okay, Stuart, can we go to the back? Okay, let's go to the back. So here is something else I wanted to point out to you that I have found pretty, pretty important in, in keeping me from freaking out. And that is, for example, I have redbud trees all throughout the backyard. I've got two here, I've got one there, and then I have redbuds back in here. Now what I have noticed is even though they are all the same variety of redbud, they're all native eastern redbuds, and they will all be in bloom at the same time, they all don't begin that bloom at the same time. So for example, I am noting that this one that's furthest to the north is starting to come out with those sweet little purple flowers first. And then probably what I'll see is a progression from north to south of when the buds come out. And that's also true if you've got plants in your flower beds. I notice that particularly in the front, there will be times when something that's on the south end of the front yard will start to bloom, germinate, or grow faster than something on the north end. So if you record that, then I don't freak out and think, oh my gosh, is that tree dead or whatever? And I can go back to my notes and my notes will tell me no. Pretty much every year it comes into bud later than the others. Another reason I went back and I looked, um, it's one of the reasons I like on the iPhone app, it will tell you a year ago today, and I can look back exactly on a year ago today and see what was going on in my yard. And last year, Stuart, a year ago today, this Japanese viburnum that's over here in the corner, which is just now coming into bud, 
Last year, it was already pretty leafed out. The leaves were small, but nevertheless, it was completely green with small leaves. However, the Chinese snowball viburnum back here is pretty much on track. I think maybe because we got this good rain, who knows, or because it was a mild, it was a mild winter, but it looks about the same as it did this same time last year. So that's just kind of a tip, you guys, to compare one year to the next so that you can see how different, how a winter's weather in one year impacts when things begin to emerge the next year. And over a period of time, that's how you can kind of track how things relatively will come into bloom or if climate change has impacted them, is it coming earlier or later? So that's definitely something to take into account. So here's something that I'm gonna observe today and record in my notebook. And I can see here that this golden barberry is now starting to leaf out. But I have red pygmy barberries that are smaller and a different color, and they have not begun to color yet. So that's another kind of distinction that can be made. Back here, the boxwood is coming along fine. I talked to you the other day about three fast projects you could do. And I talked about spray painting your cloches or different things, different garden ornaments, so that they all kind of match. And I couldn't finish it the other day because the wind began to pick up and it got way too windy to do any kind of spray painting projects. But I'm gonna finish that as soon as I am able. I was very happy to defer that since we got rain. I was so thrilled to see the rain. I, I, I wasn't dancing naked in the street, Stuart, but maybe I thought about it. <laughs> um, I'm so pleased with how all of these tulips are coming up. I showed you this the other day, but I think it's just gonna be, let me get out of the way, Stuart. I think it's just gonna be so dear when all of these are blooming. I have radishes that have germinated uh, I, I seeded some dill, I seeded some lettuce, and with all of that rain we got, pretty soon that stuff is going to really, really take off, and I can't wait. Um, I gave both of these Arborvita a hard prune and a good feed right before that wonderful rain, and you can see that the winds have already knocked down these metal guides that I had here. That one got wind blown and I need to put it back in place, which I will, but what's the point now? Cause it's just too windy. Um, I'm gonna talk about boxwood more later, but even if you're cutting back your boxwood hard, like I did this, you can still have a form and it still can look presentable and communicate your vision, even if it's been cut back hard. And then over here, Stuart, we can, maybe we can end on, on this note. Um, this was a fail. It was doing beautifully until it got knocked over by something. Me or, I don't think it was you, Stuart. I, th I think it was maybe me or maybe some, I don't know what happened, but it knocked over. So this pretty pot of tulips may not manifest, but boy, Here's an example of some of those tulips that I said were just starting to emerge. So for example, these are the ones that will bloom sooner. But look here, there's some, some in here that have just started to come out. So I have found that for my own peace of mind, if there's one takeaway I would say, that is to really use that garden journal to record what is happening because you want to know from one year to the next um, whether you're on track behind or ahead 
And this year, it's just, as always lately, it seems kind of silly and redundant to say the weather's been wacky, but it has been wacky. Um, something else, as a little last reminder on this Wednesday walkabout, remember, if you want to force branches, go out there now and cut your Japanese maples, your redbud, your, your pears, your quince, um, your forsythia, whatever you might want to force inside. Now is your window of time to cut and force those branches. So Stuart, is there anything I forgot? Okay, thanks for walking around with me today and I'll see you guys next Wednesday. Well, if you're still hanging in there, here is my outfit of the day. My sunglasses are Ray-Bans. I got these off of Poshmark. Uh, my sunglasses, uh, wait, let me start over again. <laughs> I started to say my earrings. I was trying to remember. I always have you noticed how I always flub up on my earrings because I can't I can't see them, so I don't know what I've got on. Now I have to think about it. Okay. You remember? Yeah. Okay. And then three, two. Well, if you've held on this long, here is my outfit of the day and my fashion epilogue. My sunglasses are Ray-Bans. I got these off of Poshmark, a great deal on them, by the way. Let's see, my earrings are just some metal disc earrings. They're lightweight, and I've had these for so long, I couldn't tell you where I got them. Um, my bracelet is actually a necklace that I made, and I've just woven it around to be a bracelet now and my ring I got on one of our trips. I honestly can't remember exactly where I got it, maybe in Santa Fe. Uh, my jacket is All Saints from Poshmark also. I, I think I've told you that I'm re I really like that brand. Um, my top, it, you can't tell, but it's long sleeved and I got this at a local boutique here called Eden. My skirt, I also got at a local boutique here called Goodwill. <laughs> And my boots, my cute cowboy boots, these were a gift from Hubs last Christmas. And my gloves I bought online. Have I forgotten anything, Stuart? I don't think so. I don't think so. So there you go. There's my outfit of the day.